Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're looking at the Word 2019 exam and we're looking at the domain for the exam called Manage Documents. Overall, this accommodates for 20 to 25% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can look at this domain with me. This video began to get a little long, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a two-part series. This is the first video. And in this video, we're gonna cover Navigate Within Documents and save and share documents. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. We're talking about the Word 2019 exam, and we're looking at the first domain called Manage Documents. Overall, this accommodates for 20 to 25% of the overall exam. We're on the first subdomain called navigate within documents. The first thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to search for text. We're on the home tab, we're in the editing group, and what we want to do is click the find button. You can also use the keyboard shortcut control F to access that, and I'll go ahead and do that now. And now we have the navigation pane. I'm going to go ahead and search for the text chapter two. This is a 15 page document, and I don't know where that heading is at. So I'll go ahead and type it in. And it tells me that there's two instances here. The first one lands on the table of contents. That's not what I want. I actually want the second one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. The reason for this is it's gonna lead into the next point of the subdomain, which is linked to locations within documents. But before we can do that, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and select this entire line of text, chapter two, the shadow, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a bookmark. We're gonna to go to the insert tab, and in our links group, we're going to select bookmark. For the bookmark name, we'll go ahead and type in chapter underscore two. I added an underscore because if I had just added a space to notice that the add button disappears. But doing that underscore allows me to add that break between chapter and two. We're going to go ahead and click add. And what we've done is we've created a bookmark. I will note that notice that I selected the entire chapter two heading. That's different than putting your cursor in front of that text and creating a bookmark. That will create two different results. Just keep that in the back of your mind if you're creating a bookmark. Let's go ahead and scroll up. We're actually gonna go to the chapter one text because we're gonna change this to heading one and you'll see why in a minute. So we're in our table of contents. This subdomain says that we should be able to link to locations within documents. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select chapter one here. I'm gonna go to the insert tab and we're gonna look at the links group. You can select link. You can use the keyboard shortcut control K or I'm a right clicker. So I tend to right click on things to find what I need to access. It's up to you on how you wish to access this. I'm gonna begin by placing in this document. What you should note here is we have a few things. First, we have our heading. Remember I selected the chapter one heading and applied the heading one style to that? Notice that that brought this under headings now. And remember when I created a bookmark? Notice under bookmarks that I have chapter two. What we can do is we can make this a hyperlink chapter one to go to my heading one text by just clicking okay. Before I do that though, I do want you to note the screen tip here. This is just helps to help the person navigating through your document so that they know where that link is about to take them. We're gonna go ahead and click OK. And notice that becomes a hyperlink. If I hit the control button on my keyboard and select this chapter one, notice it went ahead and brought me to that chapter one heading. In addition to hyperlinking within your document, let's go ahead and select this Peter Pan text, and we're gonna go back to the link window because there's some other things that you can do. You can link to email, you can change your text here, when you started adding an email address, watch what happens. It added that mail to in front of my email address. That's HTML language. It's just to make sure that the email client opens up. And you can also add a subject. You could type in book, and what that will do is when you click the link, it'll open up an email addressed to the user with the subject of book. Again, you can add a screen tip for this. But the last hyperlink that I want to show you is an existing file or web pages. This is what most people are familiar with. What this will do is it will turn the text into a hyperlink that will link you to a web page. 
So let's go ahead and type in one for Peter Pan. There are some things to note here. This was a lot to type on the exam. If you're asked to hyperlink to a web page or any text, actually, you want to make sure that you type it exactly as you see it in the task question. Notice that Peter Pan is capitalized. That's important. Had you typed it lowercase, you would have gotten it wrong. We'll click OK. And now if I click this, notice it takes me to the Wikipedia page for Peter Pan. We're told that we should be able to move to specific locations and objects and documents. Let's go back to the Home tab. We're in the Editing group. We're going to click the Find dropdown. And what we want to do is select Go To. And on this left hand side, we have a bunch of different sections. We could look for pages, sections. We created a bookmark. So notice that my bookmark appears here. You can do things like comments and footnotes. This might prove useful on the exam if you have a large document and you got to look for a specific thing. And using the standard find feature doesn't help you as much as you had wished. So if I type this bookmark and click go to, notice that it took me to the chapter two bookmark. But again, because I selected all of that text when I created that bookmark, it highlighted all of it instead of just putting my cursor there. And the last thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to show and hide formatting symbols and hidden text. Let's go ahead and close out of this. We're on the Home tab. We're in the Paragraph group. And what we want to click here is the Show Hide button. Watch what happens when I click that. If we look at our document carefully, you can see here you have a bunch of paragraph marks. That's just showing a paragraph. If you look in between our words, we can see a dot. That's for spacing. If I put my cursor in front of this paragraph and hit the tab, notice that an arrow appears. That arrow is just telling you that there's a tab. If I scroll up in my document, we see a column break. To most people, these markings can be quite annoying, but it can be extremely helpful in a document like this because it's telling you what's going on in the document. For example, these breaks are a big deal for this document. However, if you don't have the show hide button on, you don't know that there's a page break there. Let's pretend that there's more going on on this page. And in fact, there's three columns listed out. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Makes this page pretty crazy looking. But if I said to do some type of formatting change after the column break on page one, well, I know that my cursor needs to go in the second column and not before it. I wouldn't know where to put my cursor had I not been able to visually see that column break. So this little show hide button on the home tab can be very important. We're on the third subdomain, save and share documents. The first thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to save documents and alternative file formats. We're going to click the file tab. And the first place that we're going to go is the save as section. We're going to go ahead and click on browse. And that brings up this window. While we're here, let me say this. You should feel comfortable navigating through these different sections under this PC. For example, if it told you to find or to save a file in your 3D objects, you could easily do that by navigating to that folder. For this, our location's fine. Our file name, we could type in the name that we want this file to have. But what we really want to look at is in this section, save as type. If I click that drop down, you could change this to a Word macro enabled document. You could downgrade the document to a previous version of Word. You have things like PDF, XPS. You could change this to a web page and it would save into that type of format. You could do plain text. There's a lot in this group. You should be familiar with the different save types. We'll go ahead and click cancel. Because what I want to do is I want to go to the export tab. And in this section, there's two things I want you to see. The first one is to create a PDF XPS document. If we click that, it brings back open that window that we had before. And notice PDF is selected here, and I have the option of PDF or XPS document. We have the option of opening file after publishing. If we don't want it to open up that file, we can just uncheck that box. You also have the optimize for settings. You have standard and minimum size. On the certification exam, if it wanted you to change one of these settings, it would say something like optimize for online and printing or optimize just for online. You also have this options button. If we click it, you get a few more options, such as if you wanted a certain range. We'll click cancel here and we'll click cancel here. And then we'll go back to that section. We'll look at change file type. 
in this window, we get the same features that we saw in the save as. It just makes it a little bit more convenient with this window. Once you select what you want, you'd click save as. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to modify basic document properties. To do that, we'll go to the info section, and this is where you start when you click the file tab. To add document properties, we're gonna look over here on the right, and I could easily add the title word to this document. Now I wanna caution you, something that my students tend to wanna to do is after they type a specific word or phrase, they'll hit the space bar at the end of that, and that's gonna mark them incorrect. You wanna be careful that you don't add anything extra, and if a word's capitalized, you make sure you capitalize that word. When you're done, you can click out of this. Now, if I had said to add the status property, Notice that that property is not listed here. If I click show all properties, notice that I now have the status field and I can add that property. We're told that we should be able to modify print settings. So we'll click on the print section. At the top, you can change the amount of copies that you want to print. For our print, we can print all of the pages in this document. We can print a selection. We can print just the odd or even pages. Of course, you can print on one side of the page or on both. Collated versus uncollated can confuse people. Collated would be this. If I needed to print five copies of this document, it would print all 15 pages of this document before moving on to the next copy of this document. Uncollated would print five copies of just the first page, and then it would print five copies of the second page, and then move on to each page. And it gives you a little bit of an example underneath each of those. You can change your page orientation. You can change your document size. You have the option of changing your margins. You can change the amount of pages that are listed on a sheet. So maybe you want it two on each page. And then something to note is you can also change the page setup. So if we click this, we get this dialog box and we have the option of making some more advanced setting changes here. The last thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to share documents electronically. We'll click on the share tab and notice that you can share with people through the cloud. If I click save as, talks about linking to your OneDrive location. I don't have that set up, we won't click it. You can email out documents. You can send it as an attachment, a link. We talked about sending as a PDF or XPS document. And then it says you can do an internet fax. You can present online if you have a subscription for that. And you can also post to a blog. And if you click that, it'll start prompting you to start linking those accounts. I don't have anything like that, so I won't click it. 